What a lot of people don't know about the movie Boys in the Hood is it was really based on the director John Singleton's life. The cast of Boys in the Hood all went on to have some pretty interesting, impressive careers. You had Lawrence Fishburne as Furious Styles, Ice Cube as Doughboy, Cuba Gooding Jr. as Trey Styles, Morris Chestnut as Ricky Baker, Regina King as Shalika, Mia Long as Brandy, and Angela Bassett as Reva. But there were other cast members whose careers were cut short due to tragedy. Now the first one I want to talk about is um, Lexi Bigham Jr. Lexi Bigham Jr. was born August 4th, 1968 in Chicago, Illinois. After graduating high school in 1986, he spent a year at Southern Illinois University before attending the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in Pasadena, California. He started his career in television with small roles in dramas such as China Beach and L.A. Law. He also appeared in nine films, including Drop Zone, Dave, Seven, Airheads, Up Close and Personal, Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood, and South Central as Bear. Lexi also appeared in several stage productions in California with the Rebirth Drama Company, including Women Behind Bars and A Raisin in the Sun. But in 1991, most people remember him for his role in Boys in the Hood as Mad Dog, the kind-hearted gangbanger who gave Little Ricky and Trey their football back after his friend stole it. And on December 17th, 1995, Lexi Bigham died in a car accident in Los Angeles shortly after filming his last movie, High School High. He was 27 years old. R.I.P. Lexi Bigham. Now, the second story is about Diedrich D. Goldberg. Now, Diedrich D. Goldberg was born on November 25th, 1971 in Louisiana. When Diedrich went to audition for the role in the Boys in the Hood movie now, John Singleton just gave him the part because he had such personality and they were from similar backgrounds. After landing his role as Dookie, the Jerry Curl always sucking the pacifier friend of Doughboy in the Boys in the Hood movie, he started taking his acting career serious. In 1993, he landed a role in the movie Poetic Justice, starring Janet Jackson and Tupac Shakur. But what people didn't know about Diedrich is that he had a passion for illegal street racing, according to John Singleton. And on November 19, 1994, Diedrich was fatally shot during a fight with several gang members shortly after participating in a drag race. Now, reports say that after a race, Diedrich, who was a Crip gang member and intoxicated at the time, got into a physical altercation with 15 to 20 blood gang members after he approached them and began throwing up gang signs and taunting them. You know, words were exchanged and Diedrich reached under his shirt as if he was reaching for a gun and then a fight broke out. Now, Diedrich's friend who tried to protect him during the altercation was also fatally shot and Deidre's girlfriend was shot in the right side of the neck, but she survived. But that bullet later was removed and damaged her spinal cord and left her paralyzed from the neck down. And on May 5th, 1999, a jury found that blood gang member that killed Diedrich guilty of two counts of first degree murder with a multiple murder special circumstance finding an assault with a deadly weapon with intent to cause great bodily injury. He was sentenced to death. Diedrich Goldberg also played in the movie Higher Learning, which was released after his death in 1995. He was 22 years old. R.I.P. Diedrich Goldberg. Now, this last story is about Lloyd Avery who played Knucklehead in the movie Boys in the Hood, best known for being the trigger man who murdered Ricky. 
Lloyd Avery was born June 21st, 1969 in Los Angeles, California. He really came from a middle-class family growing up in View Park, where he attended Beverly Hills High School. After trying out for the movie Boys in the Hood, he landed a role as rival gang member to Doughboy, played by Ice Cube, known for using a shotgun to kill Ricky, played by Morris Chestnut. After Boys in the Hood, he started to take his acting career serious and began booking more roles. He landed a role as a gang member on the TV show Doogie Howser, M.D. He was also cast by John Singleton in Poetic Justice. He also appeared in the classic Wayans Brothers comedy film Don't Be a Menace to South Central. And in 2000, he went on to appear as Nate in Master P's movie Lockdown. Then the following year, he played the role of G-Ride in the indie film called Shot. But instead of being an actor, Lloyd decided to become a gangster for real, moving from his middle class home to the jungle, the notorious Bloods breeding ground you might have seen in the movie Training Day starring Denzel Washington. Lloyd even went as far as tattooing the name Jungles above his eyebrow after joining the gang. Now, after just finishing his last movie he starred in titled Shot, Lloyd was arrested for a double homicide and sentenced to life in prison. He was charged for killing Annette Lewis, who he shot five times, and Percy Branch shooting him twice. Now, Lloyd Avery's brother stated that he think his brother had that Tupac syndrome, referring to when Tupac played Bishop and Juice. He said his brother turned into a for real, for real gangster and apparently never got over playing Knucklehead in the movie Boys in the Hood. He felt like he had something to prove when he really didn't. Even if you have money and fame, you would sacrifice all that just to have the respect from a bunch of thugs, Lloyd Brothers stated in the interview. Lloyd wanted to go to the toughest prison, which was Pelican Bay. He thought he could beat his case and then become a rapper who was a convicted murderer and make songs about it like Snoop Dogg. But it didn't work out that way for Lloyd. He was granted a retrial, but found guilty again. And on September 4th, 2005, while he was serving his time at Pelican Bay State Prison for a double murder, Lloyd was murdered by his Satan-worshipping cellmate, Kevin Roby. Now, according to reports, Lloyd had changed his life and became a born-again Christian. He started a prayer service for inmates and began spreading the gospel even to his cellmate, Kevin Roby, the Satanist, which made the whole prison system take notice. But that was a problem, though, because his cellmate, Kevin Roby, was a Satan worshiper in year 17 of his three life sentences for murder. Lloyd and Kevin Roby got into a fight that turned violent after an argument about God and the devil. And Lloyd was struck in the head and then choked to death. Correction officers somehow, when they did an inmate count, didn't notice Lloyd was missing until the next day when they discovered his body in the middle of a pentagram drawn in his own blood while Kevin Roby was performing a satanic ritual. He was 36 years old. R.I.P. Lloyd Avery. <laughs>